a word for our listeners. Octung Cthulhu is set in the 1930s and 40s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It is not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain Gaming Podcast. Join us each week as our investigators uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring George Chimbles, Phil Durham, Rob Walker, Justin Kimmett, Shirley Nedzwicky, and Scott Troiano. With Matt Quiet running the table as the keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hi everybody, welcome back to Masks of Nyarlathotep, Octung Cthulhu. I am here with Shirley. Hello. Phil. Hi. <laughs> Hello. George. Yavol. Scott. Art. Tongue. Arc tongue? Art. Uh, Art. We are arting. Jeez. Rob. Still having fun. <laughs> and Jesse. Oh, love. Howdy. Hey, Not look. as excited on this one. No, still <laughs> It's because I broke a lamp. Like, and I love it's because I broke a lamp. I love lamp. I love lamp. I have <laughs> hatred for lamp. So, uh, Miss uh, October was going to talk to Miss McCree. Yes. Go ahead. So, you go to talk to me, and I say, Miss October. The building was marked. No, listen to him. He's telling you something important. I thought he already told me. Not about the building was marked. No, listen to him. The building was marked. There was a plan for entry and exit. This was a coordinated attack on the establishment. You can have that look on your face. That's perfectly fine. However... If you could speak with Miss McCree about who's missing and any salient details around that, it would be of much assistance. My hope is my hope here is that you will be able to assist in the investigation in a significant enough manner that it can get you points to be deputized. Oh, really? You care about me that much? Yes, ma'am. Oh, that's so sweet. Salient? What does salient mean? Beneficial and helpful. Oh, okay. I'll go talk to her now. Thank you. She turns around and just struts right over to Miss McCree. Struts. She struts. Mm. Oh my gosh. So at this time, like, I built up a rapport wrong? with Eva. I, I, would it be Eva or would it be Miss McCree still? Uh, it'd probably be Eva. Okay. Mm. I, I was talking to Eva. Whoa, I'm having a conversation here <laughs> with myself. Okay. Sorry. It's not a side conversation going, my apologies. Eva. Yes. Um,. I know some of the stories that you've told me in the past, and this kind of sounds like one, or I know your investigative skills, so I was wondering if you could just help me out a little bit. You have so much experience under your belt that I, and you know that I admire you, and I look up to you, and you've taught me so much. I just want to be able to prove myself to these people. Can you help me? What do you need help with? (laughs) You've yet to tell me that part. Okay. Um, on the outside of the building, there's some chalk markings or something. Like, this was a, the window was marked so that people could come in. Okay. Um, also, who, who was missing, or is there any details about their missingness? Their missingosity? No, their missingosity. No. She would be intelligent, you know. She mm-hmm. Oh, no, I know. Miss You're fine. Go ahead. Um, <clears throat> um... About them missing, is there any details that you could tell uh, me? James was missing this morning, uh, but we assumed he was sick. It happens sometimes. The students don't have... Was there a note? No. Usually but the students don't have... Note over. Sometimes, but not always. Okay. Um, and then... So let's go look at the mark outside the window and then tell me if you can tell me anything about it. The, the mark isn't... She's not going to be telling you anything about the mark. It's a, an espionage mark, okay. not anything else. 
Okay. Is that all you know? Can you ask? Yeah, ask more questions about James. That would be a good thing. Oh, James. Um, uh, how long has he been at the library? Uh, uh, he's been with us for two or three months. When did he start volunteering? I don't remember seeing him around. Oh, you know, he's he's always been helping with uh, putting card, with putting books away. Uh, about two, three weeks ago, we gave him access to uh, help out in the restricted section. He seemed to know quite a bit about um, the the esoteric matters, so we thought that, that would he would do well back there. Didn't you find that? I mean, what's his background? He usually checked those he's a, out. He's a student um, of. Um, I believe archaeology. What is his last name? Miller? Oh, that doesn't sound familiar. Um, so he's a student of archaeology. He knew most things about the esoteric books in the, <clears throat> in the private section? Well, no, he just knew things about uh, the occult and esoteric matters. So we thought he thought that he would German? be a good help. I don't, I don't think so. Is it German? I don't think so. So he didn't speak it or didn't have the accent? No, no I've, never, I've never heard anything like that. Did he have a limp? No. What did he physically look like? Uh, he's a blonde, blonde uh, gentleman, 5'10", slender. He is a blonde gentleman. He's not dead. Let's not talk about <laughs> him like he's already dead. Yet. Um... Did he seem like he was wealthy? Um, he seemed like he came from a cultured background. He helped himself. Uh, cultured, gnomes, esoteric. <laughs> so, from your background and your knowledge, a man of his age, or a young guy of his age, did it seem like he knew more than he should? Uh, I mean, if he was involved in archaeology, in the archaeology program, he probably would have picked up a lot of what he was telling us. Did he know Professor Weld? I'm sure he did. And Professor that's outside? Washington. Yes. Uh, I'm sure he did. I don't I don't know. If he was in the archaeology department, that would be... He would know both of them. Anything else that I'm missing as a player? <laughs> Did he come into money recently? I mean, did he start spending like he hadn't been before? Not that I'm aware of, no. But did his behavior change at all? Over the past couple of weeks. He, he seemed excited to be working with the rare, rarer books, but I mean, it, it is a very choice position to do such things. <laughs> did he have any visitors come not to here. the library? No, not here. Political leanings, membership of any groups... Are you asking this, or is she asking this? And I just want to make sure. Am I in the room with us? Yeah, yeah. And if you yeah. are, that's fine. Um, Carlos, is it? Yes. Yes. Um, He's a friend. We didn't really talk about any of that kind of stuff. I, you know, politics don't come up here. We talk mostly about the books. Did he stay on or off campus? My understanding, he had a, a room in one of the dormitories. Do you know which dormitory? Uh, I can look it up, and she... Yeah. Like, goes to could. his file and pulls it out and hands hands you the information. Oh, can I have the information? Yeah, sure. Um, Thank you. Do you want to look it over real quick? Uh, yes. Roll me library use. <laughs> well, while she's doing that, um, is it normal that after only, you know, three or four months or whatever, someone will get access to that? If they needed somebody and they showed a specific trustworthiness... The head librarian might promote an assistant into that position. Also, if they're part of they're part of the archaeology department, they would they would um, be more likely to gain that access. This was probably what is considered nowadays a like a student work kind of deal. So um, I look at it. Are you standing next to me, Carlos? Close enough. Yeah. Um, I would hand it to him just to look over. So you didn't succeed. No. Do you want to roll me a library use there, Carlos? I don't know that you're the one to do it, but... I am very well read. <laughs> How did we not get more libraries? Nope. nope. Okay. So we hand you back the paper. <laughs> I mean, are you not? Are you standing there? I think we're all in the room. So yeah, yeah, you're all kind of... What? Nice Scott, go ahead. No, I'm not going to pass it to you. Okay. <laughs> pass it to the professor. 
Did, does... Did you pass it to the professor, Carlos? I'm holding it as he asked for it. Yes. Oh. Okay. Cool. Good. Uh, I pass. Okay. Um, it. Uh... <clears throat> you have been on the campus for a number of years. The address for the dormitory is right. But the room number is wrong. It could be transposed numbers. You know, there could have been a mistake writing it down, but that room number does not exist. You also don't know this this man. If he was in the archaeology department, he may not have been in one of your specific classes, but you would be aware of his access to the program. Just, just like in general, like there's only 150 people in the archaeology department program. You would be aware of him. He You're sure. Have, he wouldn't have just gotten in, so I would try to figure out who vouched for him then. You're sure? No, he's yeah. a member of the archaeology uh, program. Uh, that's what I was told. By who? Uh, the dean said that everything was fine. <clears throat> the dean actually recommended him. Interesting. Um, so I don't say anything about the room number being wrong or anything, or even um, that I don't know him. I just asked that question. Um, uh... Is there anything else? I th- we should probably meet, but I think that we should probably do it in a, a quieter spot. Should I use one of the study rooms? Yeah, uh, I think that would be reasonable. The parking lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there anything out there? Before cars. Before we meet, he, we found a piece of wool on the wall that I want to look at. On the floor, yeah. On the floor. Yeah. yeah. It's a piece of wool. Like from a suit. I mean, there's not much else there. It just looks okay. like he got caught. If I can't find anything like left behind where they were, I'm going to go back in the building. Okay. So you guys will pull off into a study room and bring Mr. October with you, I assume. And close the door. I heard the description of the man. Yes. And that matches the blonde. That... Yep. Miss October, did you find anything of note? And I tell you everything. And, of course, Carlos and the doctor back me up. And when I reviewed the document, um, uh, James? James, James. yes, his name is James. James Miller. Miller. James Miller. James Miller is not in the archaeology program. Um, uh, Ms. McCree reports that the dean vouched for him, um, but he is not in the archaeology pro- uh, program, so we should definitely look into that. Perhaps Ms. McCree um, heard that from someone else, and that was where a miscommunication happened. Um, or we, you know, definitely need to uh, check this out with, uh, I would suggest, the dean. Um, and the other thing is, is that um, while this is the address of one of the dormitories on campus, this room number does not exist. Are if you, you switch these two numbers... Are you, you're paging through his file? Uh, yeah. You flip to the last page, there's a letter from the dean. Uh, give uh, me... You know, you don't need to give me anything. That signature's wrong. It's off just a little bit. You've done enough study of writing... It's close. It's not perfect. On a quick glance, someone who wasn't looking for it would see wouldn't see something wrong with it. These numbers are transposed in wait. This right here <clears throat> that's not his signature. It's a decent imitation, but that's not his. Um there is major wonkiness going on in this file. But he did have an actual room. Just I can't number. verify that if you transpose his numbers, he would be in that room. It would have more appeared to me, especially based on this forged signature, that he got the address of the dorm, made up a number which now does not in fact exist. And, and the dean's signature looks fake, so he's probably not... He's probably faked all of it. Well, we know who gave him the inside information. We know who had the ways of showing. Now we just got to figure out... Why? But he and was here for three months, so somebody else would have had to have seen him around campus. He had to say somewhere. Now. What's the dean's name? Dean Arnson. Arnson. Uh, but if the dean wasn't the one to sign it, he might even know the kid exists. Well, we need to verify that. B, the dorm where those numbers transposed would be at, is that a single person dorm or would multiple They're people? all double off your occupancy. Is this a, uh, this is not a co-ed university. This no, uh, yes, yes it is. Okay. But the, the, women's the, dorm, the women's dorm is smaller and not nearly as well kept. Okay. And 
This is the address is for the men's dormitory. Right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, yes, the the address is correct. The room number is, is the incorrect part. Um, we can certainly check uh, and verify with the dean that he he did not in in fact sign this. Um, I definitely think that it would probably be at least worth it a little bit to um, probably quietly at this point speak to the other library assistants and see if any of them happened to spend any time with him away from work or picked up anything in any conversation uh, with him. Or maybe if some more marshals are available, they could um, do some of that uh, footwork. Uh, you call back to the office to ask for more marshals, because that's where this is going. I'm going to montage a little bit of this. Um, you call back for to do some more montaging, or to, to, to do some more montaging. <laughs> So, so, so we're montaging a montage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. You call back to get some more officers. This feels so easy. Everybody else starts asking around. You find out that uh, James had hung out with a couple of people twice. Um, he was very anti going out. He didn't want to spend any time with anybody. He was so busy with his studies, what he kept telling people. No one ever saw him go to a dorm. But twice he went out to him with them to a bar nearby. Um, and uh, that the last time was four weeks ago, so it's been a while. You call back for a couple of um, men to come out to do a little more canvassing. They tell you that <clears throat> the, that three men, matching your descriptions, have been have been seen in Boston um, near the docks. So I relay the information. Okay, are you still asking for more people to come out as well? Like, that's fine. I just want to know if we have field agents coming here. Not if we've spotted them. Okay. I still have other the resources available for other tasks. Okay. You're also told that uh, the two agents are coming down, are, are already down in town, and they've already uh, called back to explain that everyone knows because small town cops don't shut their mouths. It's very clear that everyone told everyone about the prisoner. However, there's a couple of um, uh, employees for Heckler and, and uh, Jenkins um, that have were that were not that didn't show up for work this morning that should have called and explained that when someone went to check on them one of them is dead the other one's missing mm. the missing and nothing strange in the coronary report no markings no, on the body no, no no just a couple of shots on each of them. The missing gentleman, uh, physical description: six foot one, brown hair, matches matches the other general, the other guy. So one dead, one matching. We, got, we know where the two are from, mm-hmm. and it also tells you who leaked the information. Mm-hmm. So. Who leaked what? About uh, oh, when Juan they called Ron the being locked up. When they called the company, he found out. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's not much left to do at the university right now. Um, I would say that any personal details that we can gather about these people are worthwhile. Um, so if we've gotten everything from the people that went to the, went out with them to those bars those two nights, then no, we don't need anybody else to come down here. But if we haven't gotten as much as we can on that They front, don't know much. They just know it's clear that you didn't stay on campus. Okay. And nobody reports seeing him in any class? No, no, not a single class. At the library... You know, every day for a shift on time, a little early occasionally, but that's normal. Um, but other than that, no, nobody sees him anywhere. As he wasn't studying anything strange when he was studying. He was just yeah. Nobody saw him study. Nobody he came to study. work, did his job, and went home. A car or walking? Uh, walking. Before we leave the university, once it appears clear that we're wrapping up, mm-hmm. um, I will. Um, how far is the president's office from the library? I'm gonna uh, walk. If you've walked, it's probably 20, 30 minutes by car. It's just a couple. Uh, well, do we have cars available? Oh, yeah, yeah, you had to drive up here. Well, yes, I assume I got here in a car. That yeah. doesn't mean that I have one available to me. Um, <laughs> I assume you drove down. So, yeah, you have your own car. Okay. Um, Marshall, before we leave, I'd like to just go update the, the president. Mm-hmm. And I'll be right back. So I'll just drive over there and tell him about the 
Show, show them the file. He, in the he seems upset. Not at you, just that someone faked their way onto staff, and then that person also faked their way into the group. Or into the, the library's railroad collection. Uh, make sure the president goes through each file and checks his signature. For the rest of the library assistants? For the rest of everyone across the campus. I it's going to take time, but we need that information. I will ask him. Um, the, he, he says that he'll have the police come in because there's clearly something else going on here and have them start looking and checking. But yeah, that, they'll definitely get somebody to go through those. And then I'll ask him if if he needs me need to report or fill in anyone else. No, he'll take care. Oh, he'll take care of it. And okay. um, honestly, at this point, just let him know what the end result is. And then I'll report back to the group. Or I won't. Re- I'll go back. To the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm checking on the crew before we leave. Yeah, she's um, busying herself around the desk at the front. She's not sent anybody back to the back room yet. Um, she doesn't seem to be busy, but she doesn't seem to want to be busy. So, uh, Miss McCreary, I'd like to thank you for your assistance. Mm-hmm. I also wanted to tell you that you and your people may not be interested in politics, but politics will become interested in you. As our German friends would tell us, war is just politics by different means. I think Weldy would tell me something different. You need to prepare your people. They're already here. Clearly. And I would repost security. And clearly, you don't have enough of measures in place for the kind of product you have on hand. I uh, wouldn't think anybody could just kick in a door. That kind of a door. Most men couldn't. These could. Uh, if you don't object, Marshall, I'd like to um, uh, allow Miss um, McCree and her staff to uh, put the rest of the rare books room in the back in order. Sounds fair to me. She thanks you, goes in to t- start working on that, um, and brings in the assistant that was helping her. Can I see her file before she goes back in? Not McCree's, the assistant that she takes in with her. Oh, yeah, yeah, everything looks fine. There's not even, there's not a letter of recommendation. It looks like there's uh, interview notes, and, like, this person was vetted. It's, they're from uh, a well-off family uh, you're actually familiar-ish with them, and you've seen them in classes. Like okay. this one seems fine. Okay. It's all the other evil ones you have to worry about. <laughs> um, and I will take a moment to to take Miss um, McCree aside and um, update her about the file now that I've updated the president. Okay. Um, she is also quite upset. She tells you that she'll she will be going through every file. Personally, are there any other books of interest that we should potentially put in a more secure location? All of them. Yeah, there's uh, probably seventy or eighty books in de- there. Depending on, since we don't know necessarily what their specific end goal target is at this point, right? Based off the books they took, I mean, we lose Shakespeare, we lose Shakespeare, but that's not. But that it's sad, but it's not a big concern. I would like to make sure that anything else well, of interest that needs to be secured is secure. What you tell him, and I'll just let you know, let him know. Uh, the Necronomicon is like the book, and if they take that, they got what they wanted. Then we're taking that. I think that we could put it someplace safer. I wouldn't take it with us. If, well, it's not necessarily going to stay with us, but for now, we're going to take it somewhere else. If, if they, you they, wish to put it under guard at a police station or a well, uh, U.S. Marshal Service, that would be fine. Right, that's where you not carried around. It is a very delicate book. Well, obviously. <laughs> and we're not going to take it, well, like I said, we're not going to take it with us. We're going to, want, want it secure. And I want it somewhere where they already know it's there. I don't want it to go somewhere where they're going to know. Your assigning an extra force to stand to your guard. They have already broken in. They've seen this book, laid it off to the side gently, and didn't take it. doesn't matter. If it's a book that... That's why I asked the professor if it's a book of interest. So even though it may not have been this target, it doesn't make it a future target. It does raise some of a good point. Uh, in reviewing this list, as I've, you know, in car rides or whatever I had time to do, um, is there a theme or any connecting element that I would notice? 
These are rare, hard to get books. But so is everything in that room, right? Yeah, but like the Necronomicon may have been founded. The books with German writing probably easier to get in Germany. Um, the Voynich manuscript and the Codex Gigas are unique. There are no other book like that, or of, of that kind. Let me see the rest of the list. Um, two of these are are outright um, English. So the Revelations, Revelations of Glocky mm-hmm. and the Monsters and Their Kind. So those are British books, harder to get in Germany. Um, nothing else stands out other than they're not German. None, not one of these is German. Do you have any colleagues you can contact, perhaps? Um, I can put in um, a few calls about... Uh with some relative books that might know a little bit more that might be able to put Actually, me... Actually, you would have contacts for the I have contacts. contacts. Yes, mm-hmm. I have contacts. Excellent. That's what we need to do. We need to make the connection to those contacts so by the time we're in Boston... I might know who, but he might know how to get a hold of them. <laughs> yeah. That's what we want. We want to make contact we can, with people. <clears throat> yeah. We can work on trying to track down some more information about these books in, in, yeah. in specifics. Well, I wasn't calling down a force to go to the library. I was... So I want them to up their security, but I also ah. want some of the more critical pieces like that to be moved to a safer location. Uh, perhaps National. a safety deposit box? National Library. Was it established yet? Um, I'm sorry? Was the National Library established yet? I think it was. I have no idea. Honestly, <laughs> I mean the Library of Congress. How many smartphones are at this Wrong table? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, we're not in the actual... You know, 30s. Look it up. Yeah, we are in 1938. Get in character. We're in the actual Fine. 30s. <laughs> you might have trouble with the library staff if you try to send a rare book to a different library. That's, That's not the sort my of concern. They've politics. already shown the inadequacy of their security system. And so I just want to make sure that those pieces don't fall into the wrong hands. That's really my concern. That's the most critical piece to me. Okay. Civilians don't need to be protected by like of this caliber. So the Library of Congress? Yeah, that would be a place you could send it. At yeah. least for protection. And that would be something she'd be willing to let you do. And she makes it very clear that she'll let you. It's <laughs> very expert. And I appreciate that. <laughs> I guess we're on our way to Boston. Okay, so you guys head out to Boston. Um, you pull in a couple of hours. I think about an hour later, I believe that's the actual distance from Miskatonic to Boston. Um, you pull down at, at the docks. Um, there's a heavy police presence. Uh, you know it's probably because the, the marshal, the, the, someone's been seen here, the marshals are keeping an eye. 1938, May 1938. The John Adams building just opened. Oh, good. Oh, that's so exciting. Um, as you as you arrive, you see uh, lots of patrols and that sort of thing. Um, Rob, you're our investigator. Give me an idea roll. <laughs> that was epic failure. Okay. Ninety-seven. <laughs> That they have it pretty covered here. If they're coming this way, they're going to be stopped by a lot of cops. You have you have um, everybody from you know uh, Coast Guard to dock security to police, all the up and down. Like they're they're really on top of this. Wouldn't an intelligence officer have an idea? I'm sorry. Would an intelligence officer have an idea? No. Okay. No, I you have yeah, no I clue. Have this no has idea. nothing to do with military no. intelligence. So, you should no. be busy studying his paper, anyways. Did you yeah. did you try and read the, through the paper and absolutely? Huh. That's why I've been quiet. Give me a uh, cryptography. <laughs> Boom! Oh seven under seventy five. That's a critical success. You inhaled. That uh, this is definitely SS code. Like you were pretty sure before. Right. If this is an SS code. You don't have button chops. <laughs> like, like right. this is clear. For our viewers at home. <laughs> yeah, for our viewers and listeners at home, uh, Scott has button chops bigger than your, your mom. 
And, and we don't even need to see your mom to make that no, assertion. Yep. Uh, that, 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 that statement. They yeah. are bigger than all moms. Right. <laughs> Put together. Uh, so you know that it. Uh, you know that it's definitely SS. The what you're getting out of it is. Um, you the the basic message is still the same, but what you're getting is this is the end of your mission. The information you have provided is good. Come home. It's about to happen. And it is, it's about to happen is left very vague. Right. And it's like they did it on purpose. So you don't know quite what. Schmidt, you pick up, you've, you've read enough to realize that this is just general intelligence. This is who they call general intelligence. Schmidt. Right. Um, this is bull. Yeah. Bull Schmidt. Bull Schmidt, yeah. Um, you've gotten about as much as you can out of it. Doesn't mean you shouldn't turn it over to military intelligence. It's still something you probably ought to do. Um, I'm going to call one of the office guys to come pick it up and take it. This is a cipher that, while you guys don't know, this wasn't a cipher cipher. This is more of a, we need to send something that they may not have the proper cipher for. But it's it's coded enough that, that they'll pick up on it. How many boats are leaving you across the pond? All of them. I mean, lots. It's Boston. It's one of like three major, major ports in the United right. States. Um, so are the are all of the men, Coast Guard, etc., focused on this one boat? No, no, they're focused all up and down the docks. And by lots of cops, I mean probably see a hundred and fifty. Like this is mili- This is like national security. So one hundred and fifty between Coast Guard, cops, and dock security. Are there any naval? No, no naval presence here at all. It's not technically a military issue. It's just security. It is now. If you want to make that call... Yeah, um, yeah, we have a potential military risk to someone who's attempting to leave through this port. Do you use the code words to bring in, like, emergency? Oh, yes. emergency? Okay. Oh, yes. Um, and I will I will note the, the thing they, I just they, sent to They tell you that the, one of the vice admirals will see to it that this is looked into discreetly. I, I want to catch is, these guys before they leave. Which is their way of saying, we're going to put a boat or four in the harbor. Good. Okay. Um, and every vessel leaving will be searched for these. The the guy with the limp. Yeah. Like if that I'm just, I was old and I had a limp. Uh, that's unfortunate. You're going to get a colonoscopy because we're going <laughs> to we're going to, you know, march in and out of your colon repeatedly um, before we let your boat go by. You guys spend another Couple of hours, yes. R- relating to the telegram, yeah. Um, when he sent in the other company and the number and all that kind of stuff, did we get any information about where it was sent from, where in the U.S. it was sent to? Uh, it was sent. Uh, it was sent four days ago. That's right. Yeah, four days ago. Uh, to uh, a telegraph office in Baltimore. Uh, the person at the telegraph office was told that someone would check once a day at noon every day, you know, around lunchtime. That telegraph office is right next to Heckler and Jenkins. So it's as though he would go on lunch, check the telegraph office, and go about his day. Um, it's also sold that the it, the telegraph clearly did not come from Germany. It came from Switzerland. But, that's, I mean, doesn't take a genius here to realize that that's just their way of sending it to Switzerland, so Switzerland sends it, so it's not, you know, flagged. Right. And, and the code, by the way, it, all it says is your mother is well, she, you know, don't worry about the, her health, everything's great. Like, it, it, was, it was clearly a full message, not like, oh, that's clearly code that I can't decipher, but right. I'm just going to write this. No, like, this was... A full message saying something normal. Yeah. So. Um, Deputy, we need to visit Heckler and uh, Heckler and Jenkins. That's about three hours in the other direction. Or send people there. Can send people there. Okay. You call and send people. Okay. Um, yeah, they they they're gonna send some field officers from the Baltimore um, office. Um, George, give me give me an idea roll. Uh, 
Yes. Okay. Um, so in your time dealing with the, the pilot, um, he, when he saw something, when he saw a swarm of, of planes, he would go at a different angle, and he would completely change how he was going to do it when he saw a barrier. Mm-hmm. And he would go for something else to draw you people to draw people out. So uh, there's got to be another way he's going to get off off of uh, the 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 land. I follow him. No, I'm saying hold on. <laughs> you give me two seconds to let me finish talking. Um, if this area is closed and from a mile away, you could look down the street and go, "Huh, docks are busy today with cops." Like this is no, there's no subtlety here. That means that there's got to be a different place that he's going to go. That's the way he would see it. He's smart enough to go around it. Question. So, what I saw carved into the jail wall, was that, like, a knock wolf insignia or his personal insignia? It's a knock wolf insignia, but you've seen them all do this. They all fly different. But, I, but I'm but i pretty sure that this is my guy. You're hoping this is your guy. I would, yes, I'd be real tight. If it's not your guy, somebody can point you at your guy. Commander, can you get me into an airplane? Into an airplane? We might spot something from the air. These men may be pilots themselves. Can I do that? Uh, military intelligence. Between you and, and the the marshal? Probably. Let's do that. Okay. Um, it would probably be big enough to fit the six of you, and that's it. Like, no other pilot, so you feel comfortable flying a plane that you've never flown before? You can Is go it single that. engine? Uh, I assume so. Something small, passenger-like in that day, I assume sure. would be single engine. There could be, for just six people. Yeah. You know what? There's no... There's and if no not, listeners at home, <laughs> please look that up and send us an email at nerdsdomain at gmail.com. You know, like, bird dogs and stuff? It's yeah, awesome. I'm sure they did. Can we not uh, just borrow the Spruce Goose? We'll, no, go ahead. Hasn't oh, it hasn't been built yet. Oh, it hasn't been built yet. Uh, no, nah, May. May. It's the first commercial transatlantic flight is in August of 38. Yeah, I'm, I'm still betting there's something that goes from place to place for six, eight, six people. Sure. Commuter flights. <laughs> yeah, like transatlantic. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, we, so we you get, a, you get up in the air um, probably 45 minutes later. But he's not asking us for the specific date, so we should I'm be I'm also looking for them. I want to go to the airport because I'm looking for signs of them at the airport, not just ah, to get into um, the So you guys get out to the airport probably for oh, 20 minutes. I, just, I don't know, are you? Yes. Yes. I'm so the pilot. excited at this, and I ask a ton of questions I know what we're looking for. If there's anywhere else or anything else that we needed to be looking at, if we you know, need to perhaps divide. I don't, I don't necessarily know of any other where, you know, I don't know how many airports there are. Uh, I don't know. Um... Yeah, they're still doing Zeppelins or anything. I guess I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the humanity. Uh, yeah, um, the Hindenburg crashed four years ago. In in I mean, thirty four. Is that thirty four or thirty six? I don't know. It, it, they're still they're still <laughs> the using historian guys. Zimbla, Zeppelins are still a thing, but they're not as prevalent. So no smoking. <laughs> no ticket. <laughs> You might want to have your boys call around the airfields and see if anybody's stolen an airplane or... We'll do that. An airplane to go where? Away from here. Away from the presence of all of this police. To another port? Why not? Oh, fair enough. Um, so you guys get to the airport in 15 minutes or so. There's a, just a handful of planes. Planes are not super prevalent. Uh, and they're all... They're not protected at all, but anyone suspicious would be noted. Like, you guys get there in cars, and all of the mechanics and pilots notice all of you. It's, this isn't something that happens very often. Um, do you stay and walk, ask around about a plane, George? Yeah, I'm going to be asking questions. Any, yeah, anybody taken off recently? No, no, we haven't heard anybody taken off um, that was unscheduled from any of, of the other airports here in town. I want to watch the people's react. Does anybody walk away, run away? No. Does anybody like, whoa, bro, they're here. I mean, it, it's it's literally grease monkeys being grease monkeys. Okay. And probably also pilots. I mean, these are their planes, or okay. or they work on them and fly them kind of deal. Can I roll an idea? Sure. What are you looking for? Nobody's asking that shit. Nope. Uh, no, I have no idea. These planes are awesome. 
Um, yeah, everything seems pretty standard. Um, a couple of the guys you can tell used to be um, uh, military pilots. You can just tell from the way they hold themselves and the way they treat their planes. The way they swagger. Yeah, they're, they're swagger, yes. That's blue swagger. Gold swagger, whatever. Gold swagger? No. We should Ooh, make a drink gold called gold swagger. <laughs> no, yeah, we should focus. We is. should focus. Drinking. Just saying. Sorry. Uh, but you want to go, do you still want to go up in the air? So I think it's a good idea. It might be useful, or is this it's, just it's not going to hurt? It's going to give you a better view of what else is a possibility. Yeah, yeah. Um, it does take about forty-five minutes from the time you make the call. Um, you get up in the air. You see two uh, navy uh, patrol boats and a destroyer out in the in the harbor. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, but that's not completely unheard of. There's been some weird stuff going on with American shipping at this time. So they, they may just be patrolling the area. Um, what you do notice is that there's a large um, dock. Not a large. It holds probably 15 ships north of Boston in, a, in an affluent area that the, the probably the rich use to, to hold their own boats. Um, and that a boat is slowly kind of heading out into the ocean from there. But it's also not on the harbor. It's just on the water, so they're going. To, they're not going to be caught by anything military out in the water either. I'm going to lazily circle around it at a pretty high distance. Okay. Uh, Are we all on the plane? Yeah. yeah. Do we have any parachutes? <laughs> no. Does, uh, that would be probably. I got a parachute, but that would probably be terrible. <laughs> Does it look like a ship that could uh, travel the Atlantic? No. Can I have another idea? No. You want me to take it lower? Stay above it and follow it. Okay. Because it, if it can't travel the Atlantic and it is our target of interest, it has to meet with someone else. And then we can get... Um, it's going to be dark in about three hours. Uh, Scott, roll... Military doctoring. Look at that. That's what I'm going to go with. Or tactics, whichever is higher. Is he going to tell me to steer the plane into the boat? Yes. Okay. Suicide bomber. Kamikaze. See you guys! If somebody else has military tactics doctrine, can they roll it as well? No. Or? no. No, I thought tactics would be under F. Wow. <laughs> For factics. <laughs> For faptics. Tactics. 51 under 80 on military doctrine. You know enough about the, mili- the German military that they're not supposed to have <laughs> that they keep building more of. If they've got a U-boat out there, U-boat out there, it's going to surface at night. Does this plane have a radio? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would have to. Yeah, thirty-eight. Yeah, absolutely. But it also would towers. be far enough out that yeah. that boat could get to it. But that's the end of that boat. It's not getting back. It won't have enough um, energy. Her. Yeah, but I want to shift the fuel, units that fuel, we have in the so harbor in Boston <laughs> north to pick up that U-boat. That leaves a huge area. I mean, you're looking in the Atlantic now. Destroyers are submarine hunters. That's their job. Right. There's also one destroyer right. looking for a needle and a Right, but so. we have. do we have any sort of, do we know how many nautical miles we are to the, do we know our position in the air? Can we... You can get a general, uh, you get a general idea, but it's still once you get out past a certain point where you can't see the, you get out fifteen miles or so where you can't see the shore. Where are you rolling? Five on my navigate. Okay. Boom. So, so uh, uh, you get about fifteen miles out from the shore, and you know this, Scott. Hold on, don't roll anything. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna do my navigate boat. Allow me to finish speaking. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you know that once you get about fifteen miles out, if that boat turns left, right. I mean, you then they're gonna get out that far. They're going to get out so they can't see the shore no matter what, because the U-boat's going to come up. It's just such a wide area. You'd need a lot of boats. It's just so open. So give me a lot of boats. You don't have that kind of sway to yank that many boats. You could yank a patrol boat for you and your team to travel out past them. And now, I, like I, I said, want, again, I, I mirror George's thing. I want that destroyer up on our position. I'll, I'll take a boat for me and the group, but I want that destroyer to move into coordinates this grid by that grid. Okay. Kind of to cut them off-ish. 
Sure. Or do you want them to chase them down? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, I want that destroyer redeployed here. Zulu Tango. Roll command. Roll command. I, I am just a little curious. So they, they, they shut down the harbor? They, uh, they haven't shut it down. They're just watching it. Ships are going so, out. Ships are going out. Nice What'd thing. you get? 78 under 80. Okay. Winning. Command. Or 75 under 80, sorry. Um, wow, that is not where I want to be. What was I looking up? You just rolled command, so I should look up command. Keep Stop bouncing your leg, please. Thank you. I'm like, destroyer captain, you need to redeploy to these coordinates and track down this ship with potential U-boat. Do we not have radar yet? Nope. No. Really? When does that come about? Later. Uh, they've got it. It's just classified. Right. Later. Later. What, did you not need? Not now. How about Later. Okay. They would have Azdek, which is a primitive form of sonar. Will it, will it help you now? Sonar. No, then later. <laughs> right, but we don't have a submarine. Stop. Memory. Please. Right. Both of you. Destroyer would have it. Well, the destroyer would have it. You, you tell the, the, the destroyer where to go. It, re- it starts to redeploy. The patrol boats go with it, because that's typical. Um, it'll take it a little bit of time to get in that area. Um, the boat... Keeps me meandering out that way. I don't know, um, are you gonna stay up in the air and watch the whole thing? What are you guys gonna do? What are my thoughts on getting to a boat and chasing it down? I mean, is that at all doable? Yeah. Or is this something where I'm gonna get the wild hair up my behind that Jesse had earlier? We got parachutes on this baby. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, you could <laughs> land. You could, you could land and get to a boat that could get out to it. Wow. Um, can I roll a luck roll to see if we're in a seaplane? Sure, go for it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, I think I made that. Phil, what's your win? Yeah, seaplane. You seaplane? All right. Seaplane. So you know you could just land next to it, <laughs> or ish not next to ish. It's it. gonna gunfight with a boat. <laughs> is the is the really oh, okay? This is an ugly question to ask. Is the seaplane armed? No. Just check in. Hey, you know, I could have been. I don't know. Is this like a they, they let some random on, dudes wrench an armed <laughs> seaplane and fly it around Boston. What were you saying, Phil? <laughs> the boat we're tracking. Is it yes. like a yacht? Uh, Yeah, it's a small yacht for its time. Ish. Yeah. Whatever <laughs> that would look like. I don't know. Does it sails or is it like a motorboat? Mm. We're going to say sails. Cool. Nice. It has an enclosed cabin. Are you going to see Chris Nope. Uh, yeah, sure. As an enclosed cabin. I'm going to radio the boat captain. He doesn't have to see it. It's in my head. Um, You'd have to be on the right frequency. We use the general maritime frequency. Right. Use, use your radio operator. Roll it. Haha, there's a skill for that. Uh-huh. You might be terrible at it. It might be 1%. Oh, yeah. Radio operator. Sonar, radio. Oh, there's also sonar. sonar. No sonar. If you let me have a torpedo skill like I asked in character <laughs> creation. Okay, guys, let Scott tell us what he got. Monkeys on the boat! We got monkeys on the boat! I got a 30 over 1. So, <laughs> I'm like, hello! I mean, I wouldn't even know a general maritime frequency. I mean, I not would. From a, but, I mean, you would, but... I'm not like, the dial says 6 and you're not answering me! <laughs> Son of a bitch! I throw the radio down. So you guys land, get on the boat, right? That's where we're going. Oh, so you just gonna let us land yeah. and get on the boat? Right. Yeah, go for right. it. You land no, you land. Okay, let's back up. Boat. I apologize. Are you landing the plane on land and then getting in a boat to drive out, or are you just driving we, the plane down into the water, landing there, and then we have a seaplane? Yes. Yeah. We didn't ask for a seaplane well, to land on the I'm, land. I'm asking specifically the pilot. Yeah, because he's Parker's, gonna be the Parker's pilot. Third sure of the boat. What's the commander think? So what does the commander think? We, we should land in front of the boat, have it he have it heave to, and then board it. Yar. So you guys are just cutting the marshal out entirely. No, this is actually this is something I wanted to ask. Is because I would be looking back at this. I'm not going to necessarily roll psychology on it, but what is your general attitude while the commander kind of takes over operations? Like, do you seem comfortable with that, or do you like unless you're trying to hide something? Roll psychology. Okay. So. Evelyn seems 
a little skittish about the whole thing as she Fail. remembers a story that you have told her <laughs> about a boat one time. Oh, yeah, yeah. How, how far out to sea are we? Do you, are you, hold on, are you actively showing displeasure or you're fine with it? You just seem I'm sitting quiet. Okay. <laughs> You're just chilling. Uh, can I get a military doctrine roll that if we land the plane in front of them and order them to, you know, with semaphore or whatever, like, hey, we're coming you're, aboard. You're, you're still in American waters. So you can do whatever asking. you want. Okay. Right, we're I know I can, but, waters yet. but the idea of we put our plane right, plane right in front of them and they run us over in the water. Like, can I get a military doctrine roll to know we should land next to them as opposed to in front of them? Uh, just sort of a, like, if they're going to go on the run. If they're going to go on the run, they're going to... Uh, they're going to unfurl sails and go around you because a boat probably can't handle running into a metal plane. Okay. Just, just tear all right, holes all right. in it. Okay. Or, or hell, snap some ropes. That's right. just all of that is bad. Right. So. Well, then my suggestion is to land the plane in front of them, and we will signal them to come to, or heave to. Or Do you want me to buzz them first? <laughs> yes. Get their attention. Uh, give me a pilot roll. Don't buzz the tower. Buzz the tower. <laughs> I pass. Okay, you buzz the boat. Um, as you do, everybody else that's not the pilot, give me a spot. That's you. Oh, oh not those. You are not a pilot. Yes. No. Is this a spot er or a spot hidden? Because they're two different things. Spot what? Spot er. Spot- no, oh, spotter is for artillery. Spotter is used for artillery and sniping. I, I feel anyway. If you succeeded. Girl. Are you a spot? Did anyone no. succeed? Hold on, stop. No, he's not a spotter. Did you <laughs> succeed your spot roll? Yes. Thank you. Uh, you notice that there are three men on the boat. When you buzz them, the one man goes... The, the German, the limping guy, goes below deck. These are the three men you're looking for. You then circle back and land in front or beside. That's your call. He said in front. In front. Okay. I'm going to roll tactics on that. Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll tactics. So do you Got let it. us know that these are 60. the guys we're looking for? Sorry. What did you say, Rob? 1,560. I got it. Okay. Go ahead and ask your question, Drew. Do you let us know if these are the guys we're looking for? Oh, yes. I'm like, that's them, and I draw my pistol. Okay. Uh, I, I, I pull draw my, my shotgun out of my backpack. <laughs> she pulls it, a in, shotgun out? I'm like, what? what? Where, where did you get that? Can we not fire guns inside of the plane? <laughs> Never why does she have that? <laughs> Hold on, okay, so. I just glanced at the... To answer your yeah. tactics question, short of military ordinance on the gu- on the on this sloop, there's no way in crap this is going to go bad. We're good. You should be. Fine. Even if they get crazy and you get tangled out, you just radio for the freaking destroyer. <laughs> the downside is, meh, oh well. Unless I they have to make like, sure that we're not gonna get it. yeah no unless they have artillery hidden on the sloop which they couldn't possibly have you're fine. This so is about to become a gunfight. So you pull, you land the boat, you signal the guys, and um, the German comes up from below deck. The two other guys look a little frantic, but pull pistols. The gentleman that comes up from the deck. Is has a backpack, a heavy backpack with two cylinders on behind him, and he pulls up his hands, and they are dishes, like almost like dinner size plate, dinner plate sized, and he screams something in German that translates into "Die American scum," and then those plates light up in a light blue. Can you like next Americana? What? I'm not American. <laughs> <laughs> A shockwave smashes into your ship, cripples the left wing, or the, the wing pointed towards them, um, and pushes your ship 60 feet. What? Whoa. Creates a giant wave around you. Not big enough that it's going to be a big deal, but oh my gosh, what had just happened here. You all need to make sanity checks. Are we on the water? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we're yeah. a sloop. Okay, that's not a, it's not a sloop then. Fine, I rolled a perfect... You just ruined our. You just oh, ruined our. No, our you rolled a horrible. Uh, I rolled bad. <laughs> he rolled a hundred. Yeah, that that's an automatic failure. Ooh. Oh, good. I felt the hell out of that. Oh, that's <laughs> a natural one hundred. That's. I okay. rolled so bad. Today. If you succeeded, you lose one. If you failed, you lose a d six. <clears throat> that's not that horrible. Oh, I got a nine. Yeah, one you good. said. What? One. If you failed, or if you succeeded, d six. If you failed. 
And so you just mark out. You just slash through that. Slash through the circle. circle. Yep. You slash through now, the circle. every time that you're... Do- don't mark too hard, because you will eventually get them back. <laughs> I hypothetically <laughs> may eventually get them back. <laughs> um, if you lose a fifth within an hour, a fifth of your total, um, then we'll talk. Then you go... Blah, 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 blah. And uh, that'll do us tonight for Masks of Nyarlathotep Akhtung Edition. Uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. And that will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Remember, you can email us at nerdsdomain at gmail.com or find us on facebook.com forward slash nerdsdomain on Twitter at nerdsdomain or over at our site nerdsdom.com Be sure to sign up for the newsletter while you're there. You can head over to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. We want to thank Josh Shop for our music Don't forget, you can support us at patreon.com forward slash nerds domain. And check out our shirts at slashloot.com.